Hey guys, if you're using a Samsung phone running One UI 8, you've probably noticed that the OEM unlock option is missing, which means routing your Samsung phone has become a lot more difficult. But don't worry, in this video, I'll show you a trick to route your One UI 8 Samsung phone even when the bootloader unlock option is completely disabled. This video might be a bit longer and more technical than usual, but don't stress. I've broken everything down into clear step-by-step -step instructions. So even if you're a beginner, you'll be able to follow along easily. Before we begin, there are a few important things you should be aware of. This method only works if downgrading to One UI 7 is possible for your phone. I already made a dedicated video about that. Check that first. Also, this process will wipe all your data, void your warranty, and trip Knox permanently. All right, now let's get started. So here I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S23 and as you can see, it's currently running on One UI 8 based on Android 16. Now let's enable developer options to check OEM unlock option. So in software info, tap on build number seven times until you see the message saying developer mode has been enabled. Once enabled, go back and open the developer option. And here's the problem. You'll notice that the OEM unlock toggle is completely missing. This is exactly why routing becomes tricky on One UI 8. Now to make routing possible, we first need to downgrade our phone to an earlier version. That's One UI 7 or even One UI 6. So please watch my other video where I show you step by step how to downgrade from One UI 8 to One UI 7 or One UI 6. In that video, I personally downgrade to One UI 6, but don't worry, the process is the same for One UI 7 as well. Yes, both One UI 6 and One UI 7 will work perfectly for this trick, and the later routing steps will be the same no matter which version you choose. Once you've successfully downgraded, come back to this video and we'll continue with the routing process. All right, I've just finished downgrading to One UI 7. So let's go into the settings and confirm it. As you can see, we're now running One UI 7.0 based on Android 15. That means the downgrade was successful. Now the next step is to enable developer options again. So we can unlock the bootloader before routing. And yes, this time we got OEM Unlock Toggle available. And that's exactly what we need. Simply turn it on. Once OEM is enabled, just below that, also enable USB debugging. This allows our Samsung device to communicate with PC. Once both options are enabled, we're ready to boot the phone into download mode. First, connect your device to your PC and then restart your phone. As soon as the Samsung logo disappears, quickly press and hold both the volume up and volume down buttons at the same time. Keep holding until you see a warning screen. Now long press the volume up button to unlock the bootloader. You'll see a confirmation message. Just press volume up once again to confirm. Your phone will now automatically wipe all your data and the bootloader will be unlocked. After that, the device will reboot on its own. On the boot screen, you'll notice a small warning message saying that the bootloader is unlocked. Don't worry, that's completely normal. Your phone will still boot into the system like usual. All right, the device is back on. Now let's enable developer options again. And yes, as you can see, the OEM unlock toggle is already enabled and grayed out, which means the bootloader has been successfully unlocked. Now also make sure to enable the USB debugging option right below it. Now let's move to the PC screen and prepare the necessary files to root Samsung One UI 8. Next, we need to download both firmware files. That's One UI 7 and One UI 8 for your device model. You should already have the One UI 7 firmware since we downgraded earlier. So go ahead and download the One UI 8 firmware as well. Once both files are downloaded, it's a good idea to rename them. Just add One UI 7 and One UI 8 at the start or end of each file name. This makes it easier to identify which one is which later. After that, extract both firmware files using any unzip tool like 7-zip. Once everything is extracted, you can delete the original zip files to keep things clean and organized. Next, open the One UI 7 folder and extract the BL file using 7-zip. 
Once that's done, open the extracted BL folder and look for a file named abl.elf. Now copy this file cause we'll need it in a moment. Then paste the abl file into your one UI8 folder. This is a very important step. So make sure it's done correctly. That's it. We only needed the abl file from one UI7. So you can safely delete the one UI7 folder to keep things simple. Now open the one UI8 folder and extract both the BL file and the AP file using 7-zip. This step will give you access to all the internal files we need to modify before creating our rooted firmware. Once both are extracted, copy this ABL file and paste it into the BL folder. Inside BL folder, you'll find another ABL.ELF file. Delete that existing one and paste the new ABL file. Perfect. Now the One UI 8 firmware has the older ABL file, which helps bypass the bootloader restrictions on One UI 8. Next, look for the VB meta file inside the same BL folder. We need to move this VB meta file into the AP folder. And guys, move mean move, don't copy it. Once that's done, it's time to pack everything back into a tar file. So select all the files inside the AP folder and create the ap.tar file using 7-zip. You can give the file any name you like, for example, AP or AP patched, but make sure the format is set to tar. We will need to patch this file using Majisk to root our One UI 8 device. Once the file is created, let's move it to your Samsung phone. I'll quickly do that. All right, the file is copied and here it is on our phone. Next, go ahead and download the latest Majisk app from the link in the description and install it on your device. This app will help us patch the AP file and gain root access on One UI 8. Once installed, open the Magisk app and tap on install. Then choose select and patch a file. Now browse and select the AP file you just copied from your PC. Once it's selected, tap on let's go. Magisk will now start patching the file and this process might take a few minutes depending on your AP file size. So just be patient and wait for it to complete. So file is now patched and saved to the download folder. Let's quickly confirm that. And yes, here we have our Magisk patched file successfully created. Now let's move this patched file back to the PC. So I'll quickly copy it from the phone and paste it inside the same one UI8 folder where we have the rest of our firmware files. Once the file is copied back to the PC, the next step is to extract the Magisk patched AP file using 7-zip. After extraction, open the new patched folder and look for the VB meta file. Now cut this VB meta file from here and paste it into the BL folder that we prepared earlier. Once that's done, select all the files inside the BL folder, right click and create a new tar archive file using 7-zip. Make sure the archive format is tar, not zip. One BL tar file is created. Now go back to the Magisk patched folder here, select all the remaining files and once again create a TAR file. This one will be your AP.TAR file. Perfect. Now we have both AP and BL files ready. Before moving ahead, let's clean up the folder a bit to stay organized. You can delete any leftover or extracted files that are no longer needed. Also move both AP and BLTAR files outside of their subfolders for easier access. All right, these are the five main files that we need now. Now go ahead and download Odin from the link in the description and extract the zip file. Inside the extracted folder, you'll find the odin.exe file. Just double click to run it. We'll use this tool to flash our rooted One UI 8 firmware. Now inside Odin, follow these steps very carefully. First, click on the BL button and select the bl.tar file that we just created earlier. Next, click on the AP button and select the AP.TAR file. This is the Magisk patched file we made before. Then click on the CP button and choose the CP file from your One UI 8 firmware folder. Finally, for the CSC section, you'll see two options, CSC and Home. 
csc select the home csc file this might help keep your data safe during the flashing process once all four files are added correctly it's time to boot your phone into download mode so first connect your device to the pc and then restart your phone as soon as the samsung logo disappears press and hold both volume up and volume down buttons together until you see a blue warning screen now press and hold the volume up button for about 3 seconds and your device will enter download mode Once your device is successfully connected to the PC, you should see an added message in Odin, which means we're ready to flash the files. Now simply click on the start button to begin the flashing process. Odin will now start flashing the firmware. This usually takes around 8 to 10 minutes depending on your PC and phone. So let's fast forward this part while the process completes. All right, the flashing process is complete. As you can see, we got the pass message and my device is rebooting automatically. Keep in mind, the first boot might take a little longer than usual, so don't panic. Just be patient and let your phone boot up fully. If your device gets stuck in recovery mode, don't worry. Just use volume and power buttons to select format, then format the device manually and reboot it. Once the reset is complete, your device will reboot normally and take you to the initial setup screen, just like a brand new phone. To keep this video short, I'll go ahead and skip through all the setup steps. And yes, the device has now booted successfully, and we are running One UI 8. As you can see the Magisk app is already pre-installed. When I open the app it's asking for an update. So let me quickly connect to Wi-Fi and update Magisk to the latest version. And yes, Magisk is now updated. Let's open it again. Now Magisk is asking to reboot the device to apply the changes. So go ahead and reboot your phone. And yes, the device has rebooted. Let's check the root access. And there we go. Magisk is now installed, and as you can see, the version showing here is 30.4. That means Magisk has been successfully installed, and our Samsung phone running One UI 8 is now fully rooted. To be 100% sure, let me quickly download and install the Root Checker app. All right, let's open the Root Checker app and check the root access. And there it is the message says congratulations root access is properly installed on this device as you can see the phone is running android 16 which means our one ui 8 device is now fully rooted let's quickly confirm that inside settings and yes right here it clearly shows we're running one ui 8 with android 16 that's it you've now successfully rooted your samsung device running one ui 8 based on android 16 even with the bootloader unlock option disabled if this video helped you out don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome tutorials thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one